You're right, guys. Welcome to the latest episode of Muscle Owl Talks. So this week, there's been a really well. Yesterday, there's been a really interesting, sort of exciting. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. Uh, yeah, it's um, announcement. CHMP and rather, you know, the EMA at large have announced that uh, SMA's pretty good drug, Spinraza, formerly known as Nucinersin, will be approved for all across Europe. So obviously the regulatory bodies or the funding bodies in all of those countries will have to approve it. It will go up for NHS approval through NICE. So, you know, it's by no means going to be in shops in Monday, but uh, this is the first step in what's well, hopefully not a very long road to the first SMA treatment in Europe because it's already been approved and people are having it in the States through, you know, after F FDA approval over there. So yeah, Michaela, what's your view on it? And obviously Michaela has SMA herself. So yeah. How do you feel? It's a bit mad because I was diagnosed before the gene was ever around. So um, I, I'm trying to oh, the gene that. is around. The gene's always been around. The gene's always been around, but we didn't know it was around. Um, the gene. Yeah, like I was born in 1990 and I was in 1991 when the same year that we found out what the gene was. So my blood kind of went into this quite literally. My blood was extensively studied to see if we could pinpoint something that could help. So it's quite weird thinking about that, right? Sometimes for that. So we're, it's like when they say you got blood, sweat, and tears that's gone into it. Literally all got my blood in it. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> um, it's really, really, it's it's a big day for problems like ours to have you know, lost somebody to SMA because unfortunately that this might not direct, directly help them. But yeah, for anyone in the future, no longer will anyone be covered in Europe. I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do because there is something that can be done now. Mm. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, to come from, from something which has no treatment to finally being able to say there's something we can do. Mm. Um, whether or not I can get it yet, it still remains to be seen. And I would have it, I see my doctors next week, so I'll be able to ask the question. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, it's just a, it's just a huge step forward. And, Hopefully the scientific community can learn and put what they've learned from Spinraza into other, other types of MD as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the first question that arises from this is how long is it going to take? Do we know if, uh, until NICE get their heads around it and then the NHS? Because, I mean, here's the road now. Now that it's been approved by the, F by the, F by the EMA, now that that's happened, NICE, the governing body in the United Kingdom. You've got NICE have to go through it first and then we'll probably look at um, NHS England, England and Wales, then the SMC, the Scottish Medicine Consortium yeah. for Scotland and to my knowledge it's the Health and Social Care Board here in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Um, and so just to, just, just to clarify, the first step will be NICE governing body in the UK and then if, 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 if once they give it the okay which they should do because it's got EMA approval now uh, then it's up to NHS, NHS England, Wales, uh, the Scottish Consortium uh, and the NHS in Northern Ireland for them to each decide how, if but how they're going to fund it. Uh, I, think, I think the biggest thing that concerns me right now is the capacity problems. Yeah. If, fact, that I, was, if, if, if I just asked my question, McKenna, I was going to yeah, say, is sure there enough. a possibility <laughs> that we will have what we've had with the Duchenne community uh, and what we saw with Translana, uh, such a long process of trying to get it funded on the NHS. Once it gets these next stages of approvals, Will it be granted or will we have a fight on our hands? I think to answer that, you need to look at the news this evening. Um, on ITV News, there was a story about a young boy with type 1 SMA who's having to go to France to get Spinraza. Mm. Even though right now it's available for type 1 children um, free on the NHS, and the NHS don't have to pay for the drug. It's going to cost about three quarters of a million for the first year and about half a million after that every year right. per patient. Um, so it's extremely expensive. 
but it's not that it's necessary to me because the effects of it are so pronounced. Um, your children that did it young enough tend to respond extremely well. Um, you know, we, we, we know that one or two people are walking, which is astounding for type 1 children, but the, we're concerned to be the most of the capacity problems because it's delivered into the spine by an injection in interventional radiology by a team of radiologists and doctors mm. and anesthetists and that's what I was going to say, because one can only imagine that this will cost significantly more than Translana for, for, or a Taplacin for Duchenne, which are just pills, tablets, given yeah. out to you, and then, you know, administ self-administered. This is something where a patient will have to go in on a regular basis to see a radiologist, have injections in the spine. And then, of course, there's the side effects associated with that. Um, you know, most people are able to go in a night in the one day, but... For some people, they may have to stay. Um, the treatment isn't without its side effects. It can cause some kind of kidney damage and stuff like that. So it's not clear cut. It's not the best drug in the world, but certainly in terms of what it can do for people, mm. it's phenomenal. It does you know, astounding things, um, things that we in the SMA community could never have dreamed of five years ago. Mm. Um, or even two years ago, you know, we're, we're seeing things that have never been seen before yeah. in type 1 children who have been treated with spinorata. But I think at the end of the day, everybody deserves access to it. You know, for people like me, I've got my spine fused, so there's a big question mark over whether they can even get it into my spine. So for some people, it would be suitable. But at the end of the day, there are other drugs from into that are going to be even better than spinorata. So I think we are to people to buy a lot of time and get spin rounds on the market. And for some people, spin rounds is all they're ever going to need. Yeah, no, absolutely. And of course, I, I mean, people will say, well, there are other drugs on the line. I mean, in order for these other drugs to even get a chance, we really need to see spin rather approved in the first place, don't we? Yeah, definitely. I think in order for the cause to be to understand what these other drugs might be able to do, they need to see twin rats at an effect. Certainly we need to try and get cross down, but there's no cross in the way, not really. Yeah. Not when it's so profoundly affected by, by SMA. You know, some, some people are really severely affected, and really no matter which, you know, so it's important that we get this right. And I think we also need to look at, at newborn screening again, because the earlier you get this, the better. And the better for the NHS, at the end of the day, it will reduce the amount of money Oh, yeah. They're spending on people being ill or being in a wheelchair. You're all of that cost money and spend around there will probably mitigate most of that cost. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we talk about, you know, your hospital admissions and how much they might have cost over the years. You know, can you, you know, can you begin to think about and consider the effects it would have on you? Would it have reduced those hospital admissions? Anything we could say to the NHS in terms of, come on, cost by cost? I know I've, I have a few friends in America who've just started receiving their first doses here. Similar to me. One of the individuals, I mean, for people who don't know me, I'm able to move my left arm from the armrest of my wheelchair onto my knee. It's just a drop, but I'm able to do it. And this young girl didn't have that ability. I said, you know, she's the same age as me or slightly younger. She wasn't able to do that. And after her first dose, and bear in mind, every girl she get, you improve more. She was able to lift her arm in, into the air. Um, only about a few inches. Like yes. a few inches. So um, that was quite exciting. But Fifth girl, she was out on a trampoline. Yeah. But I think, <laughs> um, I think for Roll me... Roller skating, tenth really dose. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. No, I think for me, if I can breathe a bit better, that would be me happy. That's all I'm really... Exactly. I'm looking for the health more than the movement. I, and again that's the important thing we realize here there's a separation of disability and health that people don't often really ever think about or consider and you know the, what's prime is people's health and uh, if this can really help people have a better health then it's a really good thing i think a lot of people don't see this sickness that can come in restaurant you know, I'm, I'm all right at the minute, but, you know, a year ago, I spent the whole year really ill, and you know, that was because my family was decided not to work. But there's a real difference between being disabled 
I'm being sick and disabled. I'm really going to be going out the second there. You know, to have a bit more stamina and not be sick is just really important for me. And, you know, just to be able to breathe a lot bit easier and be able to function day to day longer without having to add an antibiotic in because I'm allergic to so many of them. And I've added another one over the last month that I'm allergic to. So, you know, the fear I can be out at the second stage the better because every one of them is a risk now. Yeah. The real risk to my health and my life every time I take out, to be honest. So even to be able to rest in that time is really, really important for me, especially mm. with my lungs starting to grow bugs that nobody wants to grow. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful chat. And we'll be pushing out more on this through the coming weeks and months, as we always say. Michaela, you been at Bingo tonight? Did you win? No, not tonight. Two. two two weeks now. You're on a losing streak. So okay. I am trying. I was first. <laughs> first right. start, but it's that's it, that's it. We'll catch you all again soon. And thanks for watching slash listening if you're listening to our podcast. And yeah, more updates to follow. See you soon. Peace. Bye. Bye.